So it's a lovely sunny March day and I am speaking to Rachel Oates who is the environmental coordinator at Lee Abbey in Devon where I visited a few weeks ago. Hi Rachel. Hi, good morning. And um, Rachel, we're going to be talking about praying with creation. But first let's get to know a little bit about you. I know you started off as a civil engineer, so how did you end up at Lee Abbey? Um, well, I, yeah, I got into civil engineering because I like making things and I used to build stuff with Lego when I was a kid. Um, and, uh, and I kind of wanted to help make the world a better place. And then I kind of began to realise that, um, that climate change and overuse of resources was, was, was affecting the world we live in and, and affecting poor people more than, more than us rich folk who can afford to, to find a technological fix. Sort of thing. And, I, and I began to feel that the job I was doing as a civil engineer, um, uh, working in, a, in, yeah, in the UK, designing um, bridges and buildings and things like that, was, it was good, but it kind of, it, it was missing the point somewhere along the line. And I started to visit the Abbey as a guest, and I used to help out on their estate working parties, where you go and you help with jobs um, around um, their woodland and their fields and, and things like that. Um, uh, maintaining the footpaths, building dry stone walls, um, fix gardening, that kind of thing. And I used to really enjoy it. And I heard about their vision to build a hydroelectric plant to generate some of their own electricity um, from renewable sources. And, and as, a, as, a, as a civil engineer, I started to kind of drool over that. I thought, God, that would be amazing. I'd love to help with that. Um, yeah, it's just so cool. Uh, and then, and then uh, you know, I went back home, got on with life. And a while later, I saw they had an advert on their website um, for the posters, um, environmental coordinator. Right. And, it, and looking through it, was just my dream job. Um, something to think about, saving energy, reducing carbon footprint, uh, building their hydroelectric, uh, and also teaching the guests and community members about... Um, about wildlife and about the uh, God's creation, the world we live in, how to look after it, and 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 yeah, and monitoring some of the wildlife on on their amazing estate. Yeah, so so your interest, are, you're not just interested in um, dams and hydroelectrics. Your your interests go way beyond that into nature as well. Yeah, I mean, I've always I've always loved being outside uh, and and trying to hmm, kind of. Yeah, being part of the, the the natural world, and you know, even when I lived in Bristol in the in the city centre, I used to have an allotment and, and try and get out and, and go and dig and be close to the soil and uh, and and you know, kind of just being aware of, of things around me. Um, and and one time I remember <coughs> I remember watching a, an adult ladybird just emerging um, from from its its super Christmas thing, and and these bright orange crinkly wing casings all uh, starting to kind of fill out and harden and, and mm -hmm. curve into the normal ladybird shape, you know. And it was just it was just breathtaking watching this. It was such it just felt like such a privilege to see that um, and uh, and to have that that moment of of, of kind of being. Being, being part of seeing something just so special. And yeah, I'm not an expert. Um, I, I've learned so much at the Abbey about, about mm -hmm. um, the natural world uh, and, and the opportunity to kind of roam their, their estate, uh, looking, looking at things, finding things, getting to know um, the woodland and the pasture and the cliffs and the beach. It's just been, it's been amazing to, to, to learn about um, anything and everything from that through the you know, rare lichens and, and stuff like that. And, uh, and to, to start to start to understand it all a bit better. That sounds amazing. It sounds very idyllic. I know it wasn't. I know it was very hard work as well. Um, but um, was your did your time at Lee Abbey did it change you or in any way or the way you looked at the world? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd I'd always lived in in suburban areas in towns and cities, visiting the countryside. Um, but, but an opportunity, Lee Abbey really is in the middle of nowhere, um, and living in cro really close proximity, I think, to, um, to, to the natural world and to, to sort of the non, not human bits um, of, of the world. And I, it opened my eyes to see, um, to see our world not as, not as something just for, for you know, human personal benefit and, and enjoyment and, and that kind of thing, but as something that, that has an importance in its own right. Um, mm -hmm. Somehow, um, just just being closer to it all, um, uh, creation is it's holy because God made it and God loves it and God um, created it in a way that it can reproduce and flourish and, and evolve and, and it's just uh, and kind of seeing that up close and personal um, for the first time 
was was just fantastic. And and being at the Abbey, the Abbey is um, it's a hotel conference centre place, but it's run by a community of Christians who live there all the time, but international from all over the world. And we the community offers hospitality to the guests. And it and it really struck me that um, creation is a community, a diverse community that offers human hospitality, if you like. And and you know, it's important that we don't abuse that hospitality and that we learn to value it and nurture it and and also recognise that we are we are part of it, we're not set apart from it. We we exist within creation. And that really that really came home to me, um, in, in my time certainly Abby. Mm, yeah. Um yeah, so that's a real shift in perspective there. It sounds like a real privilege to be able to learn that uh, over the over the years. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's something, certainly something that we've been trying to uh, write about on science and belief as well, and to get across that idea of intrinsic value of creation. Um, yeah. But when I met you most recently, it was in February, at a week uh, called Celebrating and Caring for Creation that uh, Rob White from Faraday and I led there. But you, as part of that week, you led us on a praying with creation walk. So how did that idea come about? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was kind of a process, really. Um, as I as I started to get to know the Lee Abbey estate um, over over well over more than a year, you know, before, when I first arrived, um, it took me that long just to explore everywhere. Really, I was finding that um, when I went out to to look around the estate to monitor wildlife, to to go for a walk, whatever, it was getting easier and easier for me to connect with God when I was outside, surrounded by creation, compared to when I was inside the building, you know, with with the sort of standard um, forms of of worship, you know, singing and, and praying and being part of services and stuff. And and I started to feel it, it wasn't just me who was trying to communicate with God somehow, but 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 the natural world around me, creation around me, was also in some kind of um, interaction with, with God, its creator. And um, and I began to realise that, that creation is is in constant... I, I, it's not exactly communication, not in, not in words, you know, because <laughs> trees can't talk, obviously. And <laughs> trees, I don't, you know, it's not like trees have got a spirit in them or something like that. I'm not, you know, it's not, not what I'm thinking. But, but, but somehow, when a tree is a tree, um, the, the kind of treeness of it expresses something of um, of its of of, of 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 its relationship with God, even though that is not the relationship that you know a human can have with a human. Um, and I, I, I was thinking, you know, that um, in our kind of urban surroundings, we we've kind of become blind and deaf, really, to to what creation, how creation exists in relationship with God. And, and I can remember one day standing on the in the woods at the I mean, steep slope, hill slopes, um, with these woods that go down to the sea, and it was windy. And and all of a sudden, um, I realised that uh, the, the noise of the tree branches kind of clacking and crashing against each other. Um, but in the in the Psalms in the Old Testament, it talks about the trees of the field will clap their hands. And I've never ever understood that before. And all of a sudden, it just kind of fell into place. That, that the trees somehow in their in, in doing what trees do when they respond to the wind, um, that was part of, of, of communication with God somehow. And I just wanted to be part of that. Um, I wanted to understand more how maybe how maybe you know uh, uh, an oak tree in a field that can spread its branches wide, how that is praised. Mm-hmm. And maybe how a, a butterfly that was kind of woken up too early from hibernation, you know, I saw one you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, early February, and there's no nectar, and, and he's, he's kind of fluttering, and he's probably going to die. You know, how that is a kind of lamentation for, for, for the things that are wrong about, about, um, about how the world is because, because humans don't look after it as well as we should, and, and that kind of thing. And, and it seemed to me almost as if there was this kind of, there was this language that I could hear whispering around me, but I couldn't quite understand it, and and I wanted to try and try and join in with it, uh, and and um, and at the same time I came across a, an article um, in a in a Christian magazine about something called Forest Church, mm-hmm. um, which seems to be trying to do a similar same sort of thing to to learn how to pray and to worship God as part of this, this kind of wider community of creation rather than just as just human beings. 
and I and I thought, well, what can I do? How can I do this? <laughs> you know, how can I get out in it? And, uh, and 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 started going out on my own initially, um, and and then starting to take small groups of people with me um, to sort of see what we could what we could find and some how we could join in um, with what we yeah with what we thought creation might be trying to do. <laughs> yes, yes and having been in that group doing that with you, you know that really was it was pretty chilly the day we we did it. So I can't say I yeah. lingered. Um, but um, yeah, it was a very sort of unique and thought-provoking experience to do that. Um, and and you've led quite a few of these sorts of walks. So, what what on the whole do you think people are experiencing, or what sort of response do you get when people go and pray, learn to pray with creation? It's um, it's, it's quite difficult to put into words, actually, and I still struggle with, with, with kind of imagery for it because um, it's not about, we're not trying to, it's not worshipping creation, it's worshipping God and trying to come alongside. So it's a, a, there's an aspect of kind of imagining yourself into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and um, and pe- but people kind of come back sort of saying that they've had a, a really profound experience, really quite a deep experience, but they can't, they can't, explain it in words very well mm-hmm. it's almost as if it's something a bit more I- instinctive uh, that it's not it's not touching the kind of rational part of your brain in the same way I suppose um, and um, but, but uh, uh, an experience of connecting with God and connecting connecting with the world around around us and and, and beginning to understand and, and kind of get a sense of the holy net mm-hmm. of, of creation um, and and uh, yeah, but it, 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 you have to go and try it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will put a link to the leaflet that you've created to help people to do that, to take them step Great. by step through uh, going and finding a place and sitting and experiencing and, and praying. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then leaving that spot, you know, and, and going back uh, to normal yeah. life. Um, but did you... I had a couple of questions about it. The first one was presumably it's not just about me going and having a lovely experience. What's your impression about are we are we giving what what we're giving when we do that? Yeah, I mean it's it's um it's I think it, that kind of deeper understanding and deeper connection um, with creation um, and and beginning to realise that that. Um, that, that creation has this intrinsic value to God, mm-hmm. um, uh, and and so what we put into it then is is that understanding, and then from that hopefully more of a respect uh, and a love for creation that that kind of flows out into the way we treat it. Um, into you know, I mean, it, it's not quite going. Well, I'm not going to cut the grass because because I want the grass to grow <laughs> to its full potential. That would be a bit crazy. But <laughs> but but actually turning around at times and saying, well, hang on a minute, my actions, if if I do X, Y, Z, are going to have a knock-on effect. Um, you know, I'm not going to drop litter, uh, plastic bags. You know, because an animal in the wild can eat a plastic bag and 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 and, and uh, um. And it can kill them, um, and so it's just sort of recognising that that we we have an effect on what goes on around us, and and because of getting to know creation better and, and building some kind of relationship with creation that's on a, a more mutual, uh, a more equal footing somehow. I mean, it's it's really it's very hard to explain. I haven't kind of worked it all out in my own head yet. No, of course not. No, it sounds like the subject of a lifetime's worth of research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should think probably because there's always uh, yeah, and I mean, I, five years at the Abbey, I wondered if I would get sick of the deep, but I never did. There was always something different to see and mm-hmm. experience, and to, to to kind of connect in with, um, and to, I mean, it demands patience. There's a there's a kind of you need to wait, and um, you can't manufacture it. It's waiting to see and to feel and mm-hmm. sense what what creation is doing, and um, so it's, it's not. It's not a kind of verbal thing in, in the same way as, as perhaps mm. normal prayer is. Mm. Um, so they're kind of trying to you know, link in. And, and did you find yourself, I mean, you said you were there for five years. Um, did you find yourself growing in that ability to do that? Or did you find your thinking changing in any way? 
Yeah, I mean, initially, I, I, I kind of thought I was a bit, maybe I was being a bit crazy, um, you know, and jumping on sort of the new age bandwagon, and, and, and I didn't want to be a tree hugger, you know. But actually, <laughs> the first time I actually did um, kind of rest my hand on a tree and and um, allow myself to uh, to feel it more than to think about it was, was a deeply profound um, point, actually. Um, and I think moving from, from mainly verbal prayer, going for a walk and having a conversation with God sort of thing to, uh, and, and, and sort of saying to God, oh, oh, look, uh, I've seen the Robin, oh, that's great, you know, and, uh, and, and that kind of thing, that sort of, um, almost like a little child going on mm-hmm. to, to, to an adult, um, to, um, to just, um, to sort of sitting with, uh, with creation. So people used to laugh and say that my walks were getting slower and slower because I, I just kept stopping uh, and, uh, and I didn't get very far. Um, you know, it was more important to be with creation, to walk with it than to walk over it, I guess. Um, and, and, and so, um, um, yeah, kind of sort of kicking off your feet and walking barefoot. Um, mm-hmm getting off shoes and walking barefoot, sorry, and, uh, and, 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 and trying to more and more um, kind of be a bit more humble mm-hmm. uh, uh, about my mm-hmm. attitude, I suppose. So Rachel, this sounds, you're inspiring me to do this more, this sounds great, but what would you say to someone who may not understand your faith or may not understand uh, your love for the outdoors uh, and for um, creation around you? who may be thinking that this does, on the surface, sound a little bit odd. What would you say to reassure them that this is a perfectly normal part of Christian worship? Well, I mean, it, it can sound a bit odd uh, to start with, I think. Um, um, I think um, read the last few chapters of the Old Testament, Book of Job, and um, there's, a, there's a long tradition, especially in the Old Testament, of, of um, people writing the most beautiful poetic um, uh, essays almost mm-hmm. about about um, creation and uh, the world around them and so they were so observant uh, and they really knew um, they may not have understood in the scientific ways that we do now but in terms of their observations of the natural world they they, they obviously um, had, had some kind of really deep connection so that historically um, through the ages of Christianity and Celtic Christianity as well has, has really deep roots in in, in reverence for the created world, mm-hmm. uh, not not worship of it, um, and um, and I think what we find today is you know you can sit in your insulated house with a double glazing shut and you barely hear the birds and, and when you do it's a pain in the neck because you know the seagulls or the blackbirds have woken you up when you were you know trying to sleep because it got a light early uh, yeah or and rain is a pain in the neck when you're in the city because it's just miserable and grey uh, and that kind of thing and 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 creation becomes a bit of an inconvenience to, to the life you're living mm-hmm. um, if you're not careful and, and, and so you, you sort of want to brush it away and get on with other things but actually learning to, to take time out because you know a beautiful sunset or a rainbow or um, you know watching uh, the privilege of you know watching parent blue tits feed their babies or something mm-hmm. like that can be just you know it gets anybody um, you don't have to be a Christian to experience um, something special mm-hmm. uh, in seeing the world, um, doing what the world does, and and I think if 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 we as humans can can rediscover some of that ancient wisdom, if you like, that as I say doesn't necessarily have a modern scientific background, but has truth to it, mm-hmm. um, then then there's something very profound um, in there, and uh, yeah, and 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 there's a lot to learn. Yeah, yes, they do. And, and also, I suppose. Um, yeah, uh, you know, as Christians, we are seeking to get to know God better. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and as Christians, we, we, we read the Bible because we believe that's, that's you know, the word of God. Um, uh, and, but at the same time, you know, God also created creation. And, and you can get to know the style of an artist by their work. So, so you can begin, begin to recognize, you know, you recognize a Van Gogh by its style or whatever, mm-hmm. or a Monet, or whatever. they're really distinctive. And, and so there's ways of learning about God and recognizing God through his creative work in, in making the world around us, which, which I think kind of gives us signposts and pointers to, mm. to, to, knowing, to knowing God. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if I was going to do this, thinking, oh, I really want to do this with a, 
with a group from my church, what advice would you give me to get started? Um, I, there's, a, there's a really good book by a chap called Bruce Stanley called Forest Church, A Field Guide to Nature Connection for Groups and Individuals. Oh, that's the title. Um, and that's a really good starting point. I bought that book and, mm-hmm. and wrapped it up and, and it has some fantastic ideas and it explains, it explains sort of some theology behind it as well mm-hmm. uh, and, and what you're trying to get at. And I found that incredibly helpful. Um, and there's, a, there's another book that came out last year which I haven't read yet called um, Creative Ideas for a Wild Church, I think. Mm-hmm. And I, so I don't know about the content of that one, but there's, there's some resources out there. Um, and, and I think the other thing is, you know, um, if you could find a, a, a quiet spot somewhere, um, it doesn't have to be the depths of the countryside, you know, a, a park with some trees or in your back garden will do. And, and, and start off, and yeah, get, get the end of Job from the Old Testament, and there's some bits just looking for references to creation in, in the Psalms and Isaiah, and just sit and read those for a bit, maybe outside. Um, try it on your own first, get comfortable with the idea and, and sort of see how it feels. Um, and I think the key thing is to remember that this is, this is trying to connect with creation to, to, to pray or to worship God. It's not, it's not worshipping creation, mm-hmm. um, but, but, but joining in with creation, worshipping God. And, and so um, um, trying not to impose what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is very hard because as Christians we like to have a, a kind of service set up and, uh, and that kind of thing and our order of service <laughs> it makes us mm-hmm. feel comfortable and waiting to see what might happen and, and maybe nothing might happen uh, in, in, you know, in the world around us in, in this place we're sat or, or wherever and that can be a little bit disconcerting um, but, but being patient and, and, and waiting um, and it doesn't have to be you know, it doesn't have to be out in the depths of the countryside you know mm-hmm. and you don't have to trek miles in Gore-Tex and hiking boots mm-hmm. um, but actually somewhere just somewhere that you can become familiar with um, mm-hmm. to get to know it in, in more detail um, I think that would be yeah first step thank you thank you Rachel um, it's great to hear about your experience doing this and hopefully many of us can give it a try so thanks for talking to us today oh, it's been a real pleasure